you here today in this wonderful day of graduation. We cannot do that alone. You know that. So of course we have our wonderful agents, probation agents. All of you know that if it wasn't for their help and their guidance, wouldn't be here today. We also have uh, our representatives from the treatment community. You know Mr. Taylor, he comes every single time and helps us. And our lovely case managers, and the case managers who have been so helpful. We've got our coordinator, Ms. Joel Johnson, back there who puts all this together. We've got our assessors, are they here? Our, back there, nice to see you. We have our treatment providers. Can everybody raise your right your hands? Fantastic, and Will's house as well. We have um, Mr. Mohammed Ahmed, right there he is, right sitting to both sides from AXAP. Our public defender, Ms. Mossman, who is fantastic. Thank you. And state's attorney, Ms. McClendon, and Ms. Wilhite, there you guys are. Thank you so much. And of course, I see Ms. Brown and Ms. Moore, our public defender, our probation supervisor. So thank you so much. So who am I missing? I'm sure many, many people. Oh, and I bet you also didn't know that we have a nonprofit organization that helps support drug court and is sponsoring our graduation ceremony today. So do we have all any representatives from our 501c3? Mr. Smith. <laughs> so that hand is for everyone who helps to support drug court. We thank you so much. Um, but I do want to say one thing for you all. You have, all of you, walked a very long road to get here. And you, and you have accomplished so much. You've been drug free for a long time. You are volunteering, you're raising your families, you're working, you're staying drug free. But do not ever, ever forget where you came from. It could slide like that. And so remember that drug court is a family, is it not? You can always, always call agents, call Ms. Mossman, call us, call our case managers. We are always here to help you. And what I always say, there's no shame in asking for help, only shame in not. And the other thing I always say is we cannot help what we do not know. So please remember that this, this family is always here for you. I'm gonna leave you with one thought. There was a farmer who needed a donkey, wanted to buy a donkey for his, um, to help him with his farming. So he went to a, a, a donkey sale <laughs> and he picked out a donkey that he thought might work out. So he said to the uh, seller, I'm going to take this donkey home and try him out. 
and if it works out, I'll come back and pay you, no problem. So he took the donkey home, put the donkey in the stall with other donkeys, and immediately that donkey went to the laziest, good-for-nothing donkey who was already lying on the ground not moving. And he went right by that donkey and laid down. Mm -hmm. Immediately the farmer says, come with me, <laughs> and took him right back to the cellar and says, I don't want him. He's too lazy, he's not gonna work out. And the seller said, well, how do you know that? And he said, because I can tell by the company he keeps. If you lie down with dogs, get up with fleas, don't ever forget that you are a reflection of your inner life and the world around you. If you strive for the moon, you will reach the stars. Congratulations to you all. Judge Freeman. I think Judge Houston said it all, and I know you're really just waiting to hear from the mayor, so I'm not going to keep you from her. But I just, you know, I've only been here six months, and this is my first drug treatment court graduation, but I am so thrilled and I am so honored to be here because you are inspire me every day that I'm on the bench. You know how I'm like when I'm on the bench. I'm, I'm into it, right? <laughs> and I'm your, your greatest fan and your cheerleader and sometimes your mother and sometimes your principal and sometimes your therapist, right? But you have all accomplished so much and I'm so proud of you and I wish you all the best, most productive, healthy life. And I know that you all are going to accomplish great things. So congratulations. Well, congratulations. It's been, you know, at the end of my two years here in drug treatment court, and so I really don't know what to say. I'm really proud of each and every one of you. If I say too much, I'll start to cry. Um, but I'm, I'm really proud of you, and I'm so happy that the mayor could be here to see how great you all, have, how hard you work, and how great you are, and what productive citizens you're going to be for our city and our state. So congratulations. And we have, in addition to our wonderful mayor who's going to be speaking, we have wonderful dignitaries here today. We've got Byrne McBride, who is the president of Behavioral Health Systems of Baltimore. Uh, helps us get treatment. And Charlie Monaghan, many of you know from Mills House. And we have Mr. Sean from Recovery Network, so we thank you so much. Sorry, Tammy Brown from, there you are. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> CCC, Delegate Barbara Robinson, are you here today? She said she was going to be able to come. And um, our state's attorney, Mr. Bernstein, last moment had to bow out because he had, he's actually trying a case, can you imagine? Uh, things he's got to do. <laughs> so we thank you all for coming. And Mr. Ahmed. So it is my distinct pleasure, before we get to the mayor, is uh, to introduce you to a wonderful prior graduate of drug court. And in just a moment, I want to uh, tell you, introduce you to Mr. Butler. Lonnie Butler graduated in 2009. He told us when he came in, he'd been using heroin for what, a good 25 years? Probably about $200 a day. Does any of this sound familiar, folks? <laughs> right. Um, got into the program and did pretty well, pretty fast. Got out a little bit more than a year. So he hit the ground running, worked really, really hard. Decided, after he went through AXAP, he listened really hard to Mr. Ahmed, and he said, Mr. you know, Mr. Mohammed always pushes being volunteer, volunteering, mm -hmm. which I think is a wonderful way to get back and to stay clean. And Mr. Butler took that to heart. And he decided he was going to be a volunteer for our daily bread. And they said, he's such a good volunteer, we're actually going to hire him. So he's been working for several years now, staying clean, uh, giving back to the community. And it is my honor to introduce Mr. Butler. Good morning, honorable judge, distinguished guests, and families and friends. My name is Lonnie Butler. I was born and raised in Baltimore. I graduated from Dunbar in 1977. After graduating, my journey was just perfect. I was working at Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Things were just wonderful until 18, 90, 1985 when I started hanging out with the bad crowd, the dogs with the fleas. 
This, it, 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 it led me to addiction. Due to my addiction, I lost my family, my job, and I made my, I, I mean, I made my family suffer. In and out of prison, in jails, institutions, and a lot of other places like treatment centers all, all over the city. I attended a fruit program, but I was not able to act, you know, stay clean. My probation officer, Ms. Thornton, suggested drug court program in a jail, which I didn't want to do several times, known as ACSAP, Ag is Changing Together the Substance Abuse Program. Honorable Judge Houston referred me for the program in jail. I completed the program, left the jail, still I wanted to use, didn't know what was wrong with me, wanted to use. I was off to running again. At this time, I had given up on, on I, I, at this time, I had given up on, but Judge Houston never gave up on me. 2008, Honorable Judge Houston gave me another chance and sent me to ACSAP program for the third time. When I was in the program, I got the news of my brother who died of an overdose. Which, which was, was very much traumatic. During this treatment, I, I acquired so many coping skills and tools of recovery. There was something special that I learned was from Mr. Muhammad as a volunteer. I said, what, what crazy person volunteered and don't get paid for it? <laughs> but he kept saying, volunteer, volunteer, volunteer. And I know all the graduates know that's, what, that's his thing, volunteer. So what I did, I volunteered. I completed drug court after about three years, just fighting. You know, I'm humble and I'm grateful to be here today. I thought they gave up on me. I really don't even want, I don't want to read this. I just want to come from my heart. I'd like to thank Judge Houston, the treatment centers, and everybody in this room that helped me to give my life back. I mean, today I love myself. I don't know if I have to love me, no I love me. And I'd like to thank all of y'all, man. And I know I, I engage in the process. It's change every day. I engage in it. I live and breathe the change to be somebody different, to help somebody. I like to just go back and just, you know, pay a debt to my community, the community that I destroy. That you have young guys and kids, man, that, that, that just comes up, they don't have no leaders. They have nobody to talk to. Because there's still the, that drug of addiction is still out there. I know I can leave out this building any time at this moment and use again. I don't want that. So what I had to do this time is just raise my hand and ask for help. I must call Judge Houston, anybody I need to call. Because I was up here every day sitting back in the back. When the bailiff come and lock me up every day. Every time I come up here, I just got tired. At age 55, I was still 17 years old. I haven't learned nothing. But today I can honestly say I thank God for giving my life back. And I thank Judge Houston and the drug court for allowing me to have my life back. And this is real. This comes straight from the heart. It's no paper. Because I can't do the paper thing. I got to be real because I know it's people like me that's out there that still need this help and they need to hear, hear the real story that this thing doesn't discriminate and it can destroy your life, it can take your life. It took my little brother's life because I was a drug dealer. I was a user and I thought that was a life. And it wasn't a life. I love this life better and I can't give it up to nobody. Thank you. because you really hear how drug court affects people's lives. Thank you so much, Mr. Miller, for what you're doing in the community and for sharing your story with Thank us. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. It is now our distinct pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker. The mayor of the city of Baltimore is here to address you all. I'm going to turn this over to Well, it's my pleasure to introduce to you Mayor Stephanie Rollins-Blake. As you know, she is the mayor of Baltimore. And her being here today is a testament to your accomplishment. She's a busy lady, doesn't have time to go every place and talk to everyone. But she knew it was important for her to be here today because what you have accomplished is so tremendous. 
and she's here today to recognize you. So what an honor for you, what an honor for us, and it's very, my true pleasure to introduce to you our wonderful mayor, Stephanie Rollins White. Thank you very much, Judge Freeman, Judge Houston, Judge O'Malley. It's always a pleasure to see you. Um, and Judge Waxman, I know is back here, back there somewhere. Uh, I'm pleased to, I was pleased to see Councilman Pete Welch uh, join us today and uh, members of my team as well, uh, Bob Maloney and Angela Johnnies, thank you uh, for being here. And uh, I also want to thank Mr. Butler, who I'm, I'm very glad I had an opportunity to hear you this morning. Your words were uh, inspiring to me and I hope inspiring to the graduates. As I mentioned, I'm very pleased to be here with uh, you on the milestone that you have achieved. I want to uh, congratulate you and thank your families your friends and your supporters who have been a part of your uh, very successful journey. And thanks for letting me uh, share in this moment of joy with you. You know, the graduation ceremony, is, it's, a, it's a milestone. It is a mark in time that allows you to take a step back and reflect on uh, your accomplishments, the hard work, everything it took. You know, all of the, the strength it took for you to get to this place. So I'm, I'm proud to be here. And yes, I'm busy, but not too busy uh, to recognize uh, the hard work, because I know it takes a significant amount of hard work. The incredible determination and resolve. Drug court graduation is different than any other type of graduation. It takes more than studying. It takes you know, it is, there's, there's no, um, you know, there's no tests. Well, there are tests, but not the tests that you have in, in, uh, in high school. You're not, you, you're not trying to get uh, an A. You're trying to stick with it. You are trying to be uh, consistent and determined and find whatever it is, whatever. Uh, in, in Mr. Butler, I, I like how you talked about getting those coping skills because you do. You need to, to figure out whatever it is that will help you avoid the path that causes so much destruction. I spent almost 10 years as a public defender and uh, just about every single one of my clients uh, were, were suffering with uh, substance abuse. And um, after I became mayor, one of the things that someone asked, you know, and it's a silly question because as mayor you don't really, you can't just do one thing, um, I wish. Um, so when they say, you know, if you could only do one thing, what would it be? And, and after I, think, after I realized, after I got over the fact that it was a ridiculously silly question, I thought about what one thing could change the face of our city. And I said, if I could change one thing, if I could end drug addiction in our city, so many things would change. And I, as I started to think about it, as I thought about the time I spent uh, on the defendant side of the courtroom representing my clients who I would see their children being brought into court because that would be the only time their kids would have a chance to see them. They were so far gone that their, their family had no way to connect, but they knew when the court dates were so their families could lay their eyes on them. I would be in the courtroom and be torn because, yes, I was a, a public defender, but I was also uh, on the city council as well and, and, and fighting to make our neighborhood safer and, and look at community leaders who are trying so hard to hold on to their neighborhoods and see the, the, the crime, the car break-ins, the, the thefts, the, the threats, the, the fact that the, the neighborhoods, the people in the neighborhood who work so hard and want the best for their families feeling violated and vulnerable uh, from the, the petty crimes that uh, occur when you're trying to keep up with the addiction. And I also uh, thought about the violence on our street and how much, uh, how much that would be reduced if uh, we didn't have the problem of drug addiction in our city. And that was my answer. I said if, if we could, if, if I could wave a magic wand, I would uh, use it to eliminate drug addiction. Uh, from our lives, it, from uh, our lives in Baltimore, because I know it would really unlock so much potential in our city. So that's what we're here to celebrate today: unlocking that potential, understanding those coping skills. And as I was sitting here listening to Mr. Butler and just thinking about life, I, I, I think you know, wouldn't it be so much easier if all those things you learn 
you know, on the other side of the struggle, you had you you knew at the front side to avoid all of the pain and anguish uh, that you that we caused to ourselves and to our uh, friends and our families and our community. It wouldn't it be life be so much easier if uh, you know we knew everything we knew uh, on the other side. Uh, but it's life isn't easy, and the only way that you can be that beacon of light. Uh, that I know that you can be for those who are still in the struggle is to go through it because now you have the story you know I would say often say to um, you know to people when I was talking about addiction I want to to be able to you know to be a, a witness but I can only witness how it impacted me I've never experienced it you know I was very very blessed you know, you know I said God sent me to a nice nerdy family I didn't have any, you know, I, I you know, raised by nerds, was a nerd myself, didn't have, wasn't, um, you know, didn't come in, in contact with, with drugs personally in my life. It affected my family. That same call Mr. Butler got about his brother, I got about my cousin, who was a veteran, who was smart, was handsome, and as nice as he could be, but he got addicted to drugs. And I know, you know, I, I saw it in, Mr. Butler, the same way we saw it in our family, people couldn't even be around him anymore because his, the addiction had grabbed a hold of him and caused him to do things that I know that he didn't want, everybody knew he didn't want to do, but it, had, it caused him to steal from any and all of us, all of us. And it caused him to you know, destroy relationships because you know how it is. You know, your family members that are trying to hold on and there's the ones that know that they should be letting you go so you can get yourself together and then they're fighting. And it, and it pulls families apart. So I've seen it. I've gotten the call. I've seen what it does, you know, to my family, to my friend's family, and I know how significant this is. So my congratulations to you. And also my, my plea is that whatever it took for you to get here, that you don't lose sight of it because you're going to need all of those skills, all of those skills, and everything, everything that got you to this point, you're going to need every single day because it's too important to slip back. It's too easy to slip back, and it's too important not to slip back, not just for you, but for the people who are looking to you to say that there is a way out. There is hope and there is promise. You have to be that beacon, and we don't expect for you to be that beacon alone. The same help that you use to get to this point is that same help that's available. Mr. Butler told you he has so many people he can just pick up the telephone and call anytime he needs to. And you have to continue to use those skills to continue your journey because it's not over. It's not over. And we want to, I want to see, I know the judges want to see, uh, and those, are, those who have come before you and those who will come after you want to see you to continue to succeed in your journey. So congratulations to each and every one of you. God bless you and I'm so very proud to be here with you today. Thank you very much.